glad to see some faces. I'm assuming that the king down there is Rodney. Um, to remind ourselves that most of us start on mute. And if you're going to be rustling about or not speaking, it's always handy to stay on mute so the background noise does not uh, distract anybody or anything like that, because sometimes it can be distracting to the speaker. Y'all know how many squirrels I see all the time. So um, I'd like to get this off started with welcoming our guest today, Sheila Dodson from Baldwin Realtors. There's a lot of talk about clear cooperation policy, and that comes down from the National Association of Realtors. It deals with coming soon and pocket listings, and all of this kind of goes into effect May 1st. And I thought that I would get Sheila here to kind of talk to us, just give it to us straight, exactly how it is. I know not everybody was able to make the webinar that they provided for us, so she was kind enough to join us today. So I'm gonna give her the floor and, oh. Okay. All right, thank you very much for asking me to come in. I know anytime that we change things, especially when change is happening anyway, it, it always causes a little bit more angst. So I'm here to hopefully try to Sue some of that angst and explain the reasoning behind it. Um, I, I'm the type person, so I assume everybody else is the same way. I can adapt to change if I have an understanding as to why the change is occurring and what the outcome is expected. Just to change, to ask me to change, I don't always do well with. So hopefully I can help you understand the reasoning behind the change. As Stacey gave the introduction, NAR last November put into effect what they called the clear cooperation policy. And basically it was done because they've got a national view of what's happening. I've seen it here on a local level. I think it's frustrated some of you on a local level, but what they saw was it actually taking over in some market areas and impacting the members greatly. So there's always been rules on our MLS about when you can advertise listings and it's usually a three-day window. You've got to have it within the MLS within those three days. But what they were finding was that people just totally were ignoring that, and there were these things called private listing networks that were being popping up all over the country. And in San Francisco, for instance, at the national meeting, one of, the, one of your fellow members got up and said, you know, it's very frustrating and be good if something could be done about this. Every day when I'm looking for property, I have to get up and check three different sites to find out what property is available. And I have to pay a lot of money to be a member of all those sites. And they're all realtors that have these different sites and, and avenues. And San Francisco was just the one that was the most prominent in speaking, but that's been happening all over the country where people will take their listings and put them into other groups, networks, uh, masterminds, whatever you want to call it, uh, top producers, anything without putting them in the MLS. And that's a clear violation of the MLS rules and regs. All participants agree that when they join an MLS, they are going to put all listings in that service area within that MLS. And we've just seen that being not the case everywhere. And, and in some cases, not the case here in Baldwin County. About two years ago, we did the coming soon policy because we saw people putting up signs and then the agent not looking like the source for real estate because you'd have a consumer call you and say, hey, I saw a sign over here at such and such and you had no information on it. So that's why we developed the coming soon policy. So when you had that seller that you wanted to get under a signed listing agreement to ensure that you had that listing, but they weren't ready for showings. Maybe they had painting to do or company coming in or some type of repair. For whatever reason, the house couldn't be shown immediately, or maybe you were waiting for your professional photos before you pushed it out to the internet. And that's where we came up with the coming soon policy, which helps somewhat with a new clear cooperation policy that's going into May 1st, which is a mandate from NAR that we have to do. So on the webinar, we talked about the three listings that are going to be most impacted by this. It's just your, your active listings, your coming soon, and your exclusive listings, and what you have to do if you take something in that category. The clear cooperation policy is very clear that you cannot do any type of media, advertising, electronic advertising, signs, flyers, any type of disseminated information about an a listing that you have until it's in the MLS. And depending on which type of listing 
gives you the amount of days that you have to put that listing in. It is anywhere from one to three days, depending on when you take the listing. Okay, so that's a brief uh, 30,000 foot view. And um, if that, uh, Stacy, if you think that gives enough information, then we can just open up to question and answers or if there's anything else you want me to touch on before we do that. Yeah, I think that um, I would like the agents to ask questions first. I know what some of the questions I get back here and there, you know, um, yes. you know, always the what if policy is, you know, we handle those case by case basis. <laughs> okay. those what if happens. Yeah. Um, but we do have, it's going into effect May 1st. So, and we're, have a coming soon. Okay. Anybody want to open up their questions for coming soon? Your do's and do nots? You are muted. Yeah, make sure you unmute. Just to clarify, would, is there any change or what's the earliest I can put that in? Seven days, three days, two weeks? The earliest you can put it in? For I, I don't soon. quite follow. For, for coming soon. For when coming soon, up. you put you have to have that in um, within one business day if you place a sign in the yard okay if you don't place a sign in the yard you have three days from the time you take that listing to put it into the mls you don't advertise it promote it or do anything about it you have up until three days to put that in the mls or i'm sorry 24 hours on the coming soon 24 hours from the signed listing agreement you have it if it's just a standard listing agreement you have three days um now if you take that listing on a friday that's why it gets confusing. The three days comes into place. We're going to ask that next. Go ahead. Yeah. We don't count Saturday, Sunday legal holidays as a day. So say to that tomorrow, say this is Thursday, you take a listing and it, the office is closed. Say it's Christmas, because that's usually the time that we're closed the most. And you might spring two or three days together where the office is closed Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You actually would have your days would count starting Tuesday. So you'd have Tuesday in order to get that listing in in 24 hours, even though you actually got the signed listing agreement on Thursday, but it's because the office was closed or legal holidays, okay? Normal idea is if you take that on Thursday, you need to have it in the, you need to have it filed with the system, which means you put the, in, the listing in by Friday, okay? For a coming soon or an exclusive listing. If it's just your typical listing, you have you still have your standard three days to get it in. So if you put the property in on a Friday, you'd have to have it into the system um, by Wednesday. That would be your third day to have it in. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Sheila, for signs, does the sign in the yard have to have a coming soon writer or something on it if it's a coming soon, or can it just be your for sale sign? It can be just your typical for sale sign, but once you put that for sale sign in, you've got one business day to get that listing into the MLS so that one of your, your co-agents or other uh, subscribers, which is what the technical term is for an agent that's in the system, if he gets a call about a sign going to the yard, he can access that information. Uh, the other thing I could add into this is that, you know, we spent uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to market this area as you, you members being the local expert, the local advocate. And in doing that, nothing could undermine that, com that campaign more than for a consumer to call you about a sign they see in a yard and they have no information on it. Okay. So think about that, you know, to be local experts, you've got to have the information before someone else. And that's part of the, the, the uh, underlying reasons for this policy going into effect so that our members of the MLS have this information and can be the professional that speaks to that information. Do you know if Mobile is following these same policies? Because we do have some Mobile agents, not members of the Baldwin board that are listing properties over here. Do they have to follow the same rules? If they are a member of an MLS, this clear cooperation policy is the same through NAR. What might vary 
might be the fines associated with that. They may fine differently, but if there, what is of special interest, if you're a member of Mobile and Baldwin or Pensacola, all three of those MLSs allow for Baldwin County properties in both MLSs, and we allow for Mobile and we allow for Escambia County, Florida. So if you're a member of both of those MLSs or all three of those MLSs, then you can't put a listing in only one of those MLSs. You have to put it in all three of them at the same time. Okay. And that has been, again, this clear. No clear matter where it's located. Policy. If it's located in a, an air, jurisdictional area, which that's what I'm saying. Most of the properties that are listed here are in Baldwin, Mobile, or Escambia County, Florida. So if that property is located in one of those three areas, then you need to put it in all three MLSs. If you're a member of them. Correct. Couldn't require you to do that if you're not a member. Right. And just because the broker might be multiple members does not mean that the agent that is actually the listing agent has to do it. They have to be the member in order to put it in there. In fact, it's the exact opposite. A broker can't put all of their office listings in there if they're not the listing agent. But that's very important to do. And that's been a frustration of our members more at the Baldwin Mobile side because it, some people would take Baldwin listings and only put them in a mobile. Some mobile agents would only take uh, or some Baldwin agents would only put mobile properties in RMLS, even though they were a member of mobile. And that that's not right either. Okay. All of your listings have to go in the MLS so we have the most complete data. And in this era where we've had a shortage of listings, um, it, it's just become more prevalent. But who knows what, what, when this market opens back up, exactly what it's going to be like. You may be looking for buyers a bit more than you thought you were. And it may, this may help really enforce this policy better. I, think I have that's a quick very, question. I think that's important, right? What Sheila just said is that if you're a member of multiple MLSs and you have a listing in, in an area that they cover, it's not a choice which one you put it in. You've got to put it in every one you're a member of. You should pull the top. I have a quick question. Okay. Just to be clear, you said if we have a coming soon listing and we put a okay. sign in. Who am I speaking? Who's speaking? I'm sorry, I don't. Danita. Uh, okay, thank you. Robert at the Daphne office. If okay. we have a coming soon listing, you're saying we do not have to have a coming soon rider on our sign in the yard while it's in coming soon status. Is that correct? No, you have to have a coming soon addendum signed. Mm -hmm. But you don't just say rider or advertising on the property representing coming soon. So we're not going to dictate to you what your signs have to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm I not just saying a coming soon rider on the sign. Well, if you want to put one on, you can. Okay. And I think it would be a good idea. But we cannot mandate to you what sign you put on there. We're just saying if you put a sign up, even if it has a coming soon rider, You've got to follow. You've got to place it within the MLS in one business day. Okay. okay. I was under the assumption that if we put a coming soon sign in a yard, that until it became active, we needed a coming soon rider on that sign. That might be company policy that Stacy can say. And I would say that we recommend a coming soon rider on it, just for clarification. But we don't mandate a rider on it. Okay. What is yeah. the coming soon addendum? That's the first I've heard of a coming soon addendum. And do we have to have that in documents on the MLS? Well, yes, you have to have a coming soon addendum signed. The same thing with a, an exclusive listing sign, which basically says, um, it, it explains to the seller what they're missing by not putting it into the MLS, by not making it an active listing. And it also states on there for the coming soon addendum, if the property is shown by anyone, including the seller. There's a thousand dollar fine that can be placed so that they're aware of what kind of restrictions you're under. Say that still, again. Including the seller. We put this on the disclosure for the seller to be able to see that there will be a thousand dollar fine issued so that they're aware of the same restrictions that you're under. The property can't be shown. They can't have a yard sale 
and take people through their property when they won't allow other agents to take people through their property. Okay. So that coming soon addendum, which is found in the forms library on the portal or in um, zip, zip forms and um, dot loop. It's there in those three different places. If you're part of form simplicity, it's in that as well. That outlines to the seller what they're missing by not putting their property in the open market and outlines that there is a fine of what the seller can't do. The property cannot be shown by anybody, including the seller during this period of time. We have found and we hear a lot of things, well, I know this is against the rules, but the my seller is telling me to do this or my buyer is telling me to do this. And what you have to remind the general public is they're not a member of the MLS and therefore they can't set the rules but you are a member and you have to abide the rule by the rules and you can't break them or you're going to have monetary consequences. So it's up to each broker how they want to present that and what's going to happen if there is a fine so that this, everybody is aware. You know, you want to add on a separate addendum to that stating that if there is a fine due to a seller showing the property or violating any of the parts of what a coming soon listing is about, um, their obligation is to the brokerage to pay whatever you're going to do, okay? And we're trying to do that to help inform the seller as to what that means and why. So that's all. All these forms are in your portals. When you log on to the main portal screen, go into forms and you can find them all there under the MLS forms. And those are available to whether you're uh, the MLS only members that are from other areas. Um, as well. Where's the forms button on the portal? I'm not, I see zip form, but I can't, I don't have a login for that, do I? You don't need a login for that. It's right there in the forms library. It should be um, at the bottom of the main page when you log in, Sarah, and it says BR documents. And I think it's a oh, document. I was looking for Thank the word form. Yeah. Okay, it's sorry. Mentioned. That yeah. is also in my KW. I believe I sent that form to Jen earlier in the week and make sure that y'all had that form accessible to y'all within the in-house software as well. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a for sale by owner question. Okay. Um, I understand now that um, I, I would sometimes hold open houses for for sale by owners and there wasn't an agreement. It said, you know, hey, let me hold this for let me hold this open house for you. If you have a, if a buyer comes by, it's your buyer. I'm doing this um, just to, to help myself. It exposes you. And if you have the buyer, if we find the buyer that day, you have that buyer. And it's in hopes and it's worked for me several times. We have the open house, they see how I promote, and then I'll get the listing later on. But what I'm understanding is now we can't do that since technically it's a for sale by owner and we would be advertising um, on Facebook or into my database. Um, before I would always just put, you know, not listed by Keller Williams, this is a for sale by owner. Well, it's really, um, I'll let Stacy talk to it more, but no, that is not amenable. Anytime again, you're advertising property that somebody else may see and then another agent call, you should not be doing anything without a, an agreement, uh, a listing type agreement and representing any property and the RECAD and various other things. I understand it's one of the tools that are used by a lot of trainers. I can understand the advantage to you, but I wanna encourage you, you've got a lot more liability potential than you've got an advantage of picking up clients. You're much better off to work with um, not working for free for a seller that may or may not return it to you. Um, I sold real estate for about 20 years, so I know what I'm talking about. My biggest le lesson learned was when I took a listing that said, if I don't bring you this amount of money, then I'm not gonna get my commission. Biggest mistake I ever made in my life in order to secure a listing. Mm -hmm. And the FISBOs can be the same way. You're part of a profession that you shouldn't be giving away your, your tips and tricks for free in the hopes of somebody doing it. You wanna have a stronger sales presentation as to why they need to list with you and the protection you can give a seller in this market for submitting to you and your company of what you're doing because you're undermining the whole system when we don't take exclusive listings and put them in the MLS 
and just promoting more of that FISBO. I realize you might pick up a client on it, but it's the Real Estate Commission wants you to have written documents and listing agreements in order to advertise or promote a property. So. Well, I guess the question maybe Kelsey, you, you, you're kind of alluding to is, is, is a one-time show and sell document, which you would use with a for sale by owner to show the property anyway, is that kind of breaching into the idea of a written listing agreement that falls under clear cooperation? A one-time yeah, one -time show and sell is not a complete listing. It's not an exclusive listing agreement. We don't accept one-time show and sells into the MLS. Okay. So, uh, no, but in that case, you're not going to advertise to the whole world. I've got a one-time show and sell on this property. All right. The other question that we've been getting a lot is on, is on commercial listings as well. And commercial is not in our MLS. So therefore commercial properties, this doesn't apply to as well. Um, for us, we won't be enforcing. Now, if you've got raw vacant land and it's in the MLS and it, it does that, and yes, you have to follow that. But if it's a commercially improved property, it does not fall in our MLS. So therefore these requirements are not part of what that is. And that get, falls under the Gulf Coast commercial MLS. Thank you for adding that, Sheila. I appreciate it. I forgot about that part too. Um, my one last question is advertising on coming soon. And I'm probably the worst at being really super sensitive because um, you know, I, I am on the MLS committee. I do hear, you know, when people break the rules, so to speak, and I want us to all stay good, clean, not get fined or anything like that. Um, with coming soon, you have to have it in the MLS before we advertise, correct? And you get one. Correct. Sure. Now. Just within 24 hours or one business day. There is like a FAQ that I believe is in the, um, the our BR forms along with the coming soon policy. But if it's not in there, I'm going to put it in. It's actually what we changed in the MLS rules and regs, how it's worded and what it's changed. But it's pretty clear there on advertising. The property must be entered in coming soon status within the MLS before being publicly advertised or any notification of any type shared with anyone other than the seller. A for sale sign with coming soon rider may be placed on the property. And that's the may part where the rider part um, but we're not, we're not stating you've got to have a coming soon rider if you don't have one. Maybe place the property if coming soon addendum has been signed and the listing is entered into the MLS within one business day. Coming soon properties are not syndicated outside the MLS. Public advertising may only contain information that is in the MLS. The other part about this is that we're only allowing one picture for coming soon to be in the MLS. And they will not be disseminated out through the collab center, through social media. If you advertise in social media, you can only advertise what's in the MLS, which is one photo. Now, we cannot stop you from entering more than one photo into the system as a coming soon. And that's good for you to know. So like if you're at the process where you're getting ready to make it active, you can put all, load all your pictures and immediately, and I mean immediately, <laughs> make it active and then have all the photos in there. But you can only put one photo in the MLS under coming soon status. But because we can't restrict you to that, what we have done is that there are pop-up notices that say only one picture may be added. And if you do add four pictures, it's gonna pop up and say, you may incur a thousand dollar fine if you continue to load pictures. Now, we're also going to put this in when we notice that there's more than one picture in a coming soon status. We're going to notify you and you better remove them immediately in order to avoid that fine. Okay. We're not looking to try to find anybody. We're looking to try to make the most fair level playing field. And there should be extremely valid reasons as to why you put a property in coming soon status and restrict showings and restrict people. There's also an effective date that you'll fill in as when the effective date of you expect that listing to go active. If you don't put anything in there, it'll automatically default to 30 days out because that's when the property will become active in the MLS. Sheila? Yes. Um, are agent previews allowed during the coming soon period? I know there's no showings, but is an agent allowed to preview the 
that property? No. Okay. No one sees that property but the listing agent and the seller. And that's why we limited the number of pictures so that uh, nobody could do like a virtual tour of it or take that information and send it out to somebody and somebody write an offer sight unseen and then throw you into having to immediately make that property active. Okay. So we've and tried to, help, to come up with some of the scenarios. To help Stacy to help our agents understand this, because there, there have been a lot of questions, even at the board, on the difference between having it within one business day and not being able to advertise. As Sheila pointed out, the, the key is you're not allowed to publicly advertise anything that's not contained with the MLS, in, within the MLS. So in other words, if it's not in the MLS, you cannot advertise that information. So that, that's the way to explain it. And one business day doesn't give you a day to advertise everything and then put it in MLS. And that's where the exclusive listings come in because an exclusive listing, you can't even email that out or make a flyer out to everybody, any electronic advertising. So even within your office, you shouldn't be promoting an exclusive listing. However, I realize that there are benefit of having those sometimes. You just have to figure out how you're going to let people know about it so that you don't violate the rule for the exclusive listing. And they're, they're rare. I mean, for real reasons to have exclusive listings. Um, but I know that there's reasons for them existing at some point. Just have to file your paperwork and do what you need to do. Yep. Sheila, question on the, I, I see the coming soon addendum, but I also see a confidential listing addendum. That reads like it goes against the rule of having to put things in the MLS if you're a member of the board, or is this? Well, that's an exclusive or confidential listing, same thing. It's just what I was saying. We realized that sometimes I used the example on a webinar when I was selling, I had a, you know, with an average sales price of around 150 in the county, I got a listing for over $500,000 and they would not allow me to put it in the MLS. Okay. They would not allow me to put a sign. They would not allow me to do any of the normal marketing materials. I couldn't advertise it. I couldn't let anybody know their property was for sale. The seller didn't want that. that yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wanted complete privacy on it. And I'm like, do you realize how much help I need in selling a half a million dollar listing at $150,000 average sales price? Okay. Lo and behold, I, I did not only sell it once, I sold it twice. They were adamant I couldn't do anything more. So I did. I sold it twice. I found out when we walked out of the settlement room as to why they wanted it that way. And the reason was being is that they were trying to get the money and go skip out on some creditors. Because when we came out, their creditors were standing in the room waiting for us. Okay, so it's rare that there is a really valid reason for an exclusive listing. Okay, and you, like I say, you might, it's more coming soon because it might be that they're not ready to show it or you've got to get some paperwork done or some various other things and you're wanting to tie that listing up for them. But it should never be because you're trying to keep it from your fellow agents and trying to give yourself an advantage to double in the deal. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line of it. It goes against the code of ethics as to what we're supposed to be doing for the consumers. And it's definitely undermines the MLS. And all of you, when you get frustrated by these things, ask yourself a question, where would I be if I did not have the MLS and the compilation of data and the sharing of listings and the sales data to work with? Where would I be? And know that these policies are coming in trying to protect that the best that we can. And it's serious enough that there are serious fines associated with this. And I really hope we never collect any of them, but it's, it will be unlikely that we don't. I just don't want it to be you, especially when we get up to the $5,000 fine, not what you want to do because you keep breaking the rules. No. Me either. Those fines come to me first. Yes. You got <laughs> it. Yep. Stacy will be placed in a position of collecting it from you, but, um, and if it's not paid, everybody in the office can lose their access to the MLS. So don't put yourself in that position and don't put your fellow, your fellow uh, agents in that position of forcing Stacy into a bad situation. And Sheila, that was a question someone asked me and I did not have the answer it was like some fines we have, if the fine is given to the agent and the broker or duplicate, you know, hundred dollars for each one, is this thousand dollar fine, $1,000 to the agent and 1000 to the brokerage? We don't. Our, our fines go to the broker, but we notice which agent is involved with it. We don't collect twice on that. It's just one fine. And that's the same way here. It's $1,000. We find all, it used to be that we, we sent 
uh, we it looked like we find agents and then we found out agents would skip out on brokers and not get them paid. Okay. And then the agent that no, then the broker that no longer had that agent is like, I'm not paying their fine. And so we've just found it goes to the office, it goes to the broker, and we notice everybody involved in it. And we don't care who pays it, it just has to be paid. Correct. MLS fines go to the broker. They will fine us both on the MLS or penalty on the MLS dues and board exactly. Dues. Yes, so those are, are the ones that we would if you get a uh, bill in our inbox. So yes, if you don't, if you have an active licensee that has not paid their MLS dues thirty days after they're due, then yeah, we gotta we gotta ping the broker because the broker's gotta make it responsible. Those are. But there's sin, they only go to the broker. And once again, it's up to the broker as to whether they're going to enforce it. And then the agent at the same time has a late fee and reinstatement fees. So don't do that. I mean, your fees are only $3.99, but the combination of what we charge the broker and what you're charged for being 60 days late is $375. So it's almost like paying double your MLS fees. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Sheila, one more question. Um, are y'all working on a policy or is there already a policy where you can't take any offers um, on a property that was listed coming soon until maybe three days after going active or something like that just to keep agents from, um, I don't know, selling it themselves and then saying, oh, okay, I have a buyer, so I'm going to market active real quick, go show it and write an offer. Is there anything like that? This policy on. does not stipulate when you present an offer. It just says before you present an offer, the property has to be active. And we're hoping that with some of these fines or we find out that it's not being handled correctly, then the MLS committee can always review something more. But currently, there was not a strong enough conviction that we felt from brokers to, for us to get into saying when an offer had to be presented. That's part of the reason why the effective date is in there. This is the effective date of when we expect this listing to be active. To notice people, look, this is about when it's gonna go on the market, okay? That's the idea behind the effective date of active. But that's as far as we've gone at this point. Okay, and I mean, I know I've noticed another, I'm sure y'all have too, which is the reason for all this. Um, but properties that are coming soon and then all of a sudden they're pending and you're like, oh my gosh, when did that come on the market? And then you notice it's the same buyer agent as the listing agent and it's just. I, I understand. And part of it comes from a seller letting somebody in. Yeah. And that's why we're trying to do as much as we can to put that onus back on the seller and for you all to have a form that says, I've got to have this signed read it, be aware, go over it, point out the $1,000 at the bottom of the sheet um, to try to prevent some of those type of things from happening, okay? Um, we'll start here. We'll see what happens. I will tell you, if Michael Dorsett was on here, he would tell you he wanted the fines to start at $5,000 and end up at $20,000. But cooler heads wanted, prevailed. He wanted, but, 10, uh, he wanted 10, right? Yeah, yeah so... <laughs> So cooler heads prevailed at this point, but you can also understand you've got a big property with a big, big commission on it. A thousand dollars cost you in business sometimes for some people. So if we find it's a continuing problem, we will continue to assess it, but it's going to take the bro broker's involvement in order to try to enforce when a property can be made active and when you can accept offers because of real estate law saying you've got to present it all things like that. There's a lot more at stake here than just what we can do as rules and regs. Some things we can do as rules and regs, but we have to be very careful to align ourselves with the um, real estate law as well. Stacy, thank you for having me. Oh, I got thank a you. question thank I'd like to ask. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I've got a listing in uh, Orange Beach uh, that is, uh, I had listed the um, effective date was April the 15th because I thought that uh, I could have all the, some work done then. Uh, I had to get a contractor out there to uh, give me a quote on doing some remodeling. Uh, right. Uh, and that number was way too high for the seller. So then he said, 
uh, what I'd like to do is uh, sell it as a where is, as is. Uh, and so then we decided that we needed to get uh, a uh, handyman out there uh, to uh, cut some bushes and trees back just so uh, we could get and just take pictures of the property. And so that's taken me past the effective date that I had listed. I've got the data entered into the, the MLS in, uh, as a parcel listing, and I've not activated. It's going to be this uh, weekend before I can get the guy to cut the shrubs and uh, the bushes back. And then uh, I want to take a picture of the property and then, then post it on MLS, convert it to active. Well, what you should have done with that property, um, if it does it have a sign? And no, is the listing... no, no sign in the yard. All right. And is there any um, marketing at all going on with it? And what is, right, the, what is the listing date on the contract, on the listing it agreement? It is uh, 415. But there's no marketing at all. There's no sign in the yard. It's just taking longer to get these guys out there to clean up the yard. This is the exact reason why we have coming soon. By what you've said, you're in violation of current policy. Okay? Because you have a listing agreement that you have not put in the MLS within three days. Okay? So... You want to put it in and you want to put it in as coming soon with only one picture and some data. That gives you 30 days to get that property ready before you convert it to active. But if someone is in the community and they hear about this property, that he's going to sell it, it prevents them from going directly to your seller, as we've seen problems with that sometimes. It also lets the agent know that this there is a, a listing agreement on this property, so I should not solicit it. Okay, but you only have to put one picture in there that's only seen by agents, does not go out and collapse center, does, cannot be forwarded by anybody and can't be seen anybody, but everybody has the facts. So even under today's policy, you're in, you're in violation of that because your listing agreement date is 415. So I'm not sure, I don't have a physical calendar in front of me, but 415 is if that was the middle of the week, then you had three days to get that listing into the MLS. So I'm supposed to not take a listing then until all that work is done? No, you should take it as a coming soon, okay? And then put it in the coming soon status, okay? Or you have to take it as an exclusive listing and then let us know, file it here with the service paperwork-wise. But no, you don't hold it it's an active list, it's a listing agreement, therefore it's an active listing, but the status you choose to put it in as an active listing is coming soon because it is coming soon on the market and you've got 30 days to get it on the market. Now, say these contractors and everything go on beyond the 30 days, then you, you can contact us, Jay, and then manually we can change that date for you, but you won't be able to change it if there were such a problem like that. And there can be. We realize contractors rain, heaven forbid, snow, ice, you know, anything can get in the way of that. We understand life happens. But if you have a listing agreement signed by a seller, it needs to be filed with a service as either a, a confidential listing or as coming soon. Okay? Because right now you got that's a hundred dollar fine, what you just talked about. But after this policy, it could be a thousand dollar fine. Okay, so say, put these listings say, in there. Say that again. Right now, on what you just described to me, is a hundred dollar fine. Okay. But after this policy goes into effect, that would be a thousand dollar fine for not putting it in the MLS and what's in some status. It's having a listing agreement signed and not filed with the service as either a confidential listing or coming soon or active. Well, he needs to correct it or change it before Friday the 1st. He needs to correct it now. He yeah. needs to put it in and coming soon, okay? <laughs> and since you've confessed locally here, I'll talk to Jay, let him know that something may be coming in that might get alerted, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take it. We'll, we'll go through the normal process of it, okay? But, um, yeah, that's a, that's a good example. I'm glad you asked. So that everybody understands. So I need to no, our, our desire here is not to be punitive. 
It really is not. We're, we're really not trying to be punitive. But unfortunately, we have two things against us. One is that people sometimes don't understand. There can be clear misunderstanding. And the most of all is that um, you, you honestly, anybody will, can, will skirt the rules that they can. That's just our business. You know, you all are trained not to take the first no. You're trained to get to a yes. You're trained to get to an outcome. You're trained to get over objections in order to make that transaction happen. Okay. So when it comes to this, you're looking for ways to overcome objections and come up with better ways to sell. But unfortunately, when it comes to listings and sharing them with the MLS, you can't use that logic because we've got to have a fair cooperative field that ensures that our MLS will be around for a long time because I don't think any of you want it to go away, but it can be undermined to a point that erodes the ability of it. And that's what has been seen over these last few years of being such a high seller's market. So it undermines the purpose of the MLS. Okay. <clears throat> Sheila, can you share a ballpark number, how many dollars y'all take in on a monthly or annual basis in fines? We took in about um, $24,000 in fines last year. And, and the reason why I can tell you that without looking at a sheet, not because I follow that number so closely. And this year we're really down. We're down below budget and fines. But 50% of everything that we find, we give away to the community nonprofits. So I know we gave away about $12,000 last year. So that's why I know we took in about $24,000 in fines. And that's what I'm saying. We don't mean it to be punitive, but unfortunately, unless you're slapped with a fine or it hurts you, people don't change their ways. It's just some people will always abide by the rules because they don't want to be, they don't want to get in trouble, but we have more that don't care. And unless you make it hurt, they're, they're going to keep on doing what they shouldn't do. And I hate it, but it's just, it's just where we are in business. There are people who have been in this business that have never paid an MLS fine. Okay. And like I say, I just noticed the first quarter, John, I don't know if you noticed it, but our fines were actually down this year from what we budgeted. I did not so, notice it at all. Yeah. But I was about to say that's a great plug for the community service board. You mm -hmm. get to, you're the one to get to choose uh, where the, uh, the money goes to for charitable organizations. Right. Paul gets okay. to choose. Pardon me? Does Paul get to choose? You know, there could be, if we would choose, there's a way to do that. Give some feedback to John and he can always bring it back. You know, the community service committee decides where that money is going to go. But if we could decide like on three different charities or something at the beginning of the year, then we could have, okay, you're paying this fine. Where do you want 50% of it to go and let you guys choose, but, uh, and keep track of it, be a little bit more record keeping on our side and might not be as big a check. That's where we'd have to divide it down between certain ones. But, um, it would help us let you understand we're not doing this just to make money. We're trying to cover the expenses of what it costs to monitor this program, um, to give you clean, crisp data. That's what we're trying to do is make sure that you've got the best data and the best source. And at the same token, but unless we give you a fine, you, you don't respond. We can plead all day long for you to do something, but until you're fined, nothing happens, unfortunately, sometimes. And I hate it. That's why we give you 48 hours notice on most things to get them changed before we find you. All right. And I will tell you that uh, the board has been gracious to allow us not to put into effect these high dollar fines until June 15th. That will give everybody a chance to understand what they're up against. Uh, but after that point with the new MLS year, we will be enforcing the fines. And there's always the appeal process. If you feel like you've been fined in error, there's an appeal process and you can um, then do that. You can appeal. Can I ask a quick question? Or Stacy? That's what we're here for. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> I have a property that's in coming soon status right now and Jay had emailed me where to find the coming soon addendum. So I just found it on Paragon. Now, my guy, it's been like probably two weeks now. I know he has 30 days. Um, he's really hard to get in touch with. So 
I asked Jay before, do I need to get this coming soon addendum signed by the 30th of April? Or because once it hits May 1st, that's when the fines start for this. Because he will go active within the 30 days. But I just, I thought he'd be active already so we didn't do the coming soon addendum. That's correct. May 1st is when all this goes into effect. So anybody going into a coming soon policy May 1st, you'll need that addendum signed. Okay, so if he's if he's already in coming soon status, then I need to tell him he needs to sign this by May 1st. It would be good if he did, but we're not going to okay. sign it if you don't have it done because it went into the system before. Okay. So it's already in the system, you're fine. Um, okay, perfect. Thank you. I was like losing sleep over it because I'm like, I want to make sure I have all the paperwork, but okay, perfect. Thank and you. The coming, and the coming soon protects you as much as it does. It, it lets that seller know what they can't do. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm reading it right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's okay, the reasoning gonna... behind it is to say, hey, this is why you, you need to be aware of, you know, if you've got painting to do or repairs and it's a necessary point, but understand what you're missing during that time and that you can't show this property to anyone. Your agent or yourself cannot show the property to anyone. <clears throat> okay. Thank you so much. What, if they're, what if they're having a cocktail party and they see it that way? Well, you know what? If the house can't go be active on the market, then they really shouldn't be hosting parties. Think about it. What is the valid reason for having it coming soon is because you're making repairs or you have something to do, but the house isn't ready to be shown or be presented. So if you're having parties in it, it could be active. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. A lot of great questions, guys. I told Sheila we probably wouldn't take up so much of her time, but we um, certainly did, And but we appreciate it because obviously there was a need. I think a lot of people have some more clarity. Um, Sheila, in closing, I mean, y'all are always very accessible, so don't forget, you know, if you can't find me, don't have the answer, just call Jay. And, um, yeah. Call They're Jay, okay. call me, send an email. We will do our best to respond back to you and let you know, okay? Just know we're, we're partners in this with you. We're here to help you, and I don't want to be seen like the, that we're over here with a big stick just looking for somebody to slap, because we're not. Majority of these things are found either through electronic or because somebody else reports you for doing something wrong, okay? Uh, believe me, Jay has plenty to do, and Garrett, you haven't met him yet. We have plenty to do without trying to find somebody doing something wrong, okay? But unfortunately, we're the gatekeepers, and I want the best data, the best MLS that we can have for all of you, because I know how important it is to your business. Can I make a request? Um, can we do this again, but for sign rules? Sign rules. Like next time? Not right now, but can that be like our next? Uh, I, see what you're saying. I know what you're saying. And more of a um, compliance rules for signs, which doesn't yeah. as far as as far as MLS rules go. Keller Williams, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Sure. Be happy. Anytime you want us to pop in, let us know. We're we're here for you. Okay. Anything else for Sheila? Thank you, Sheila. We appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Same here. Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Thank All you. Right. We're Still got a couple more things for team meetings. So uh, this was not all of it, but we'll be real quick with everything else we got. Um, I only have a couple of things. Uh, do you want to go, Tanya, or do you want to? Um, we're going to talk about Facebook Fridays. I was not going to talk about that. I'll let you talk about that. Okay. So we are going to start doing um, what we call Facebook Fridays. And basically the whole purpose <laughs> of this, um, there's two main purposes. It's to take over the internet, social media posts with Facebook. We're gonna do this in a couple different ways, but the first way is Facebook Friday. So every Friday, we want um, everybody to post, take a picture, a screenshot of their um, Facebook ad campaign results or their Facebook ad campaign just in general. It doesn't have to be the results, it could just be the campaign and blast it all over our private page and your personal page. And we're gonna have competitions around this every Friday. Um, it'll either be, you know, the first number of people to post or the people who get the most um, leads in return. We haven't really figured out how we're going to measure that. Um, but just heads up, we're going to start doing Facebook Fridays every Friday. Um, and it'll just be all day. I think, what do you think, Stacey, 10 to, 10 to 4? 
will be your window to make your posts? I think you should do it first thing on Friday. Yeah, first thing. And if there's, everybody won't be able to, but anytime on Friday, post your, your Facebook, um, either ad or your ad campaign results. And we're going to blast it all over. Even our public page, we're going to just going to go nuts with it and try to take over social media with it. Paint Facebook red. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And then you go ahead and tell um, contest details for the other thing. Okay. Um, how go ahead. Post the ad itself. Pardon me, go ahead, John. How do you post the ad itself? How do you post the ad itself? What yeah. do you mean? Well, those campaigns you do, oh, oh, take a picture of it. Okay, that, good job, Danny. Thank you. A screenshot. High tech, high tech. Love it. Okay, so this is, we had a contest and we were talking about doing a contest that centered around working with your command. I've noticed that a lot of agents have gone ahead and put all their, a lot of their contacts in command, however, have not started Facebook campaigns, smart plans, um, their database score is really lousy. I have one of the best database scores in the company, and I think that's kind of sad because I know what mine looks like, too. She's <laughs> such a bragger. <laughs> Not a good score. It's like a 12. <laughs> so I figured if we got a um, contest where the most improved uh, command database health score did prize. you first say that how you've seen improvement on contacts put in since COVID-19 yeah. started? You guys, I'm so impressed with how many of you guys have dove in into command and put your contacts now. Um, I mean, super, super impressed. Um, so we want to keep that momentum going and we want to take you to the next level. Um, and this is where Stacy's competition is going to be awesome. Yeah. And that's what, you know, the, the contacts, contacts in your command are not doing much for you if you're not working them, right? They ain't doing nothing. They ain't doing nothing. So we're going to do a contest with the most improved database command health score, the most improved amount of contacts um, in smart plans, Facebook, how many Facebook ads you do on Facebook Friday, you get put into a drawing, and creating smart plans. Hey, can okay. I participate in this? Are can team leaders allowed to participate in this competition? I kind of want to, but no, no, we, we're, we're, we're working our database on a different contest. You and I will have a contest. We'll have our own competition. We'll have our own competition. We'll, we'll put Garrett and Jessica in it too. Yeah, um, yeah that's a good idea. Um, so basically the whole goal of it is, is I want to see y'all's command grow and your business grow. Command has a lot of different things that allow you to do things passively, just like eEdge did. I've got a smart plan right now that's going, and it is, I'm not even having to send the emails out. They're going. So what this will look like, and I'm sorry if I'm jumping around since last minute we changed to add Facebook Friday. So um, sorry. No, that's okay. I'm going to do some videos that will help show you how you get this information to Jen. And we would like to start it on May 1st. Does that look too soon? No, that's right time. Nope. Okay, that's right time. I see all yeah. their heads shaking now. It's not <laughs> too soon. So May 1st, okay, and you start your Facebook campaigns and you start getting your information to Jen. Jen is gonna be the gatekeeper on this. And I'm gonna send a video on how you're gonna send screenshots and how you submit your information to Jen. You are all in or you are all out. You cannot decide to join the second week of May because you're already going to be behind everybody else. So it, you can work it. It's just, you know, you're going to be behind. So I want everybody on board May 1st. I'll get that video out. And are there, did I miss anything, Tanya, on that? Oh. Mm -mm, I don't think so. Question. Um, we're giving away lots of money. That's all I know. Tanya, yeah. you already had a stroke, huh? I'm oh, sorry. Do you still need me to do a Loom video on Facebook ads? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'll, that would be awesome. I, I honestly, Renee does it all, and I attempted to do it yesterday, and I was like, I don't, I honestly don't know what I'm doing, because Renee does it all. So I'm going to have her do the Loom video and send it to you, and then y'all, okay. every week for the contest, will know how to do it. Perfect. Thank you. They're, <laughs> they're opening on Thursday. Yeah, I heard that. Are they limiting anything? Masks and six feet apart. 
and you know, six feet apart. And Everybody's going to have a mass tan no line. More than 10 in a group and six feet apart. So why the hell do you go to the beach? Anyway, I guess we're all going to go to the beach by ourselves. And all the restaurants and stuff still remain closed. Only take until out the 15th, until the 15th. Right? Okay. Hey, and whatever. I'm, I'm embracing every little bit. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to take what I can get. I just need, I need something to happen. So I'm happy. Hey, John, cornhole on the beach can be played six feet apart. Yes. I have a cornhole set. Me too. We're going to have a tournament. All right, we're meeting up. We're having a tournament. Okay. Speaking of games, um, happy hour this Thursday. We're going to do another scavenger hunt. So, happy hour, 5 p.m., scavenger hunt. Get your family together. Get a friend together. This is a, actually a lot of fun, especially for the kid and all of us. This big kid. I like it. Um, and then we'll talk cornhole at the beach for the next one. How about that? Oh, that might be the best idea we've had so far. <laughs> um, I was just going to tell you, Stacey, I think K.A. Ivy said business groups can be bigger than 10. There you Work go. Groups. That's what I heard. So Problem solver right there. We found Love it. Cornhole 10 plus. <laughs> <laughs> um, bold last week for bold. So if you still have questions, give us a call. And that is absolutely all I had. I just miss all of y'all, and I wish I could be in the same room as opposed to... Thanks for organizing, um, Sheila, to do this. I think it was really helpful for everybody mm -hmm. um, to get that information. And Sarah, I love your idea to have her come back and do it for signs. I think we should do a combo of signs and Facebook post, social media post, and have her do both of those okay. in the next meeting. Yeah, all and advertising, that'd be good. Yeah, and then we'll make sure and add these recordings to our library so people down the road can watch it if they have questions. There we go. Yeah. Or if we get fined for something that we did that Sheila said was okay, we have record. <laughs> and tell your tell your sellers that if they have their house coming soon, they're not allowed to have parties, apparently. <laughs> that was the craziest thing I heard. <laughs> they should not be having parties. That's what I thought. Why, if you have a cruddy house, she can still have a party. I'm like, what in the world is she talking about? Okay. There's <laughs> something like that, like to help get the house ready, like a landscape party or what? Oh, uh, no. Hello. Yeah, that was funny. I couldn't help myself on that one. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for organizing this, Stacey. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Bye. Let's go see what uh, Governor Ivy said in detail. I'll see y'all later. All right, bye. Have a great bye. day, everyone. Bye. bye.